Boxes to Bills, number 19. No, 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 19. All right, right up there. And it's from Ohio, but it's a, quite a ways away, Ohio. Some really top-end gear, and I just wanted to talk about tips and tricks about club assembly. <laughs> Welcome back to the Golf Shop. Jim McCleary here, six-time Golf Digest Top 100 Best Club Fitter, where we review golf clubs, we do repairs and builds, and we also talk about golf opinions. That way, also, your scores can go low. Now, if you would, down here somewhere, there is a bell, and there is a subscribe button. Please hit one, then hit the other. Subscribe first, bell second. That way, you get more of the videos when they drop, you get more notifications, and it helps the channel. Okay, so what do we got? Well, from uh, Ohio, we are putting together some really nice, and let me take the plastic off. Dun, 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 dun. And if Ward is, throw that away. TaylorMade, the TaylorMade. TaylorMade blades, right? TaylorMade P730s, P730s. There they are, Gore. These things are nice. Right, but who doesn't like a blade? Uh, and certainly it is a player's blade. Uh, I really haven't looked it up too much, so we'll have to go with what I see. Uh, it is a chrome, obviously it's a chrome blade. Uh, it has a machined face. All right, it has a machined face on it. Uh, small and compact as one would think a blade is. It is a very thin rounded top line that has been painted. I don't know if you can, there you go, perfect. And it also has a I won't say a butter knife sole, but it is, it's right in the middle. It's not super thin, but it's not thick by any shape of the imagination. It, it tends to fit with this. Uh, there's some machining on the back. There's some machining on the back just to separate the, uh, the bottom from the top. And that's just to give it a decorative piece. It also has a shoulder, right? Let's see if I can get that in there. There it is, shoulder, right? It has a shoulder in it and it is a taper tip, all right? And I, it, by all indications, it appears to be forged. It doesn't say forged on it, so I can't guarantee you that it's forged. All right, so we're doing a set, four through pitch and wedge. And then we are going to put in another set of LA, LA Golf, all right? LA Golf shafts. Let's see if this works for you. There we go, LA Golf. Get back anyway. Made in the USA, LAGP, LA Golf. Now I've reviewed these before, or I've talked about them before. LA Golf is chasing the younger generation in their golf shafts. Why is that? Because the golf, the younger generation, as a whole, is all about ball go far, right? Ball go far, and and why not, right? Let's make the ball go far. That means aggressive swings. Think Bryson DeChambeau, think uh, uh, Dustin Johnson, think those guys that just rip it and grip it, right? And those are the guys that LA Golf has aligned themselves with, all right? And of course, that's what they're going after. So, okay, that's what that's neither good nor bad, it's just what it is. And these are 124s, or, or you call them 1201 fours or 201 fours. Uh, 120 I fours. That's it. 120 I fours. So these are very stiff. All right, and they're very. There's a lot of meat, right? And particularly just by the way that you can hold it. You see how there's. You have to get way out here, on the balance point. The balance point's pretty high. That means there's a lot of meat on this thing, and, and it should be. It's a 120 gram shaft. So that's so. An you know, nice blades, aggressive shafts. The guy should be a player. And lastly, we're going to dress it with a Golf Pride MCC4 black and gold. All right, this is the standard, oh, plus four, MCC plus four. There we go. Let's see if we can get the focus. There it goes, MCC plus four. All right, uh, when you put them on there, and the, the, uh, the request has been to be logo down, not that way, that way, and logo down, that way. So it's going to have a pretty cool look. Right, it's all going to be black and gold up to this point until until you get to the ferrule. 
I get to the ferrule and there it is. It's a standard uh, tailor-made ferrule. I'm glad he got them. And they have a shoulder on them. Right? And they fit right in there. Boom. Not going to be a whole lot of dressing here. In fact, they might be just a tad small. But we'll see what happens when we put them on. All right. So there you go. That's what we're seeing. Okay. So that's the, that's the whole, that's what we're putting on. That's the review of them. So, you know, Golf Pride makes a, an excellent grip. They're number one for a reason. This LA Golf Shaft is for an aggressive swinger. And, a lot, you know, the people that swing like that love these things. Again, okay. And the tailor-made blades, made for a person that's a good ball striker. I don't believe the lofts are jacked. They might be in what I would call the player category which is probably around a 27. We'll know that in a minute. In fact, I can tell you here, hold on. All right, it's a 26 degree five iron is where we're gonna put it with a 46 degree pitching wedge. So in reality, these things are slightly strong, not too bad. Again, chasing distance, okay. And that's what we're gonna do. So tips and tricks, right? Tips and tricks. Number one, I want to measure everything. All right, so we start by measuring the heads and then we measure our shafts and we measure our grips. And why do we do that? We're looking for outliers. We're looking for outliers to see whether or not I might have to add weight, right? Uh, whether or not I have something that's erroneous in the way I've received it, i.e., you know, I'm looking for about a seven uh, gram increment between heads. That's give or take a gram in order to not shock my uh, swing weights. Then I'm looking for something less than, you know, nine grams is a swing weight point here. So, you know, about a, at max, a five gram swing. Uh, see how I'm keeping about half swing weight changes? That way you don't really have to do too much or anything at all. And then on the, on the grips, I'm looking for it to be very dead on. Although I could probably go two grams. Oh, and that's kind of a rarity with Golf Pride. They're normally very, very good. So now, once I get all that, I write it all down. I write it all down on my, on my sheet. All right, you can see all that. And, and I, you gotta go over it, right? You gotta go over and make sure. And as it turns out, the, uh, the pitching wedge is gonna be a little bit light. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute because it's a hair, five, six, seven, it's, like, it's still under a swing weight point, so it may not be too bad. Now, the golfer has asked for a D3 swing weight. And I can't tell you how many times I've beat the swing weight to death, but we're going to do it again. What we're looking at is the heads are light by design, right? They're light so they can be made longer. Now, what you would normally do in order to catch up uh, the swing weight in some cases, because for me, let's just say a standard uh, five iron would be 256 grams. This is 251, so that's five grams light. All right, so that's five grams. That's a couple swing weight points right there, right? One, two and a half. But he want, and that just brings me up into the D category. So now this guy wants D3. So now all of a sudden I need something like 11 or 12 grams. That's gonna to be tough to come by because the only the highest they make for us is 10. And it looks a lot like that guy. Now there are several other ones out there. There's one that has tungsten powder and it's a much smaller look. But you what you do is you have to cut this piece off in order for it to be installed. I'm not a fan of that now. I used to do it all the time. Once I discovered these, I thought these were a little bit better. So I get them, they get in there, you're good to go. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So I did measure it. Now here's one of the tricks. All right, tip number one is how to hold the head onto the shaft while you're trying to mess with it. So I do have my head in, or I do have the tip weight in here. And the thing that I like to use is fishing line, right? Fishing line. And a fishing line looks a lot like that. Okay, I can you even see it. There you go. It's just a, it's just fishing line you get from the local store. Should be good to go. And what we do is we put it in there and we put it in the side of the, you put it in the side of the hosel and so that it, inside the hosel and then slide it down over top of the head so that it sticks, see? All right, that's number one. So tip number two, or trick number two as the case may be, is finding the swing weight. Now, 
here's you got the negative it's cut shaft ready to rock and roll and you want to know what the swing weight is well you could put it in the swing weight machine and and all it would do would it would hold the naked shaft and that's pretty good but then you could you know rest it on top and that would be very very close but let's say you want to get closer okay closer it the the trick or tip is called the split grip so you see what you do is you take a grip and you cut it right down one side or the other and then you slide it on there make sure it's all the way on and now you put that on the thing and you are very very close yeah i can hear it now well what if you put a piece of tape isn't that some yeah truly it is but i didn't put a ferrule or any glue in there now are they equal no i think it's going to be slightly heavier uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing in a lot of cases you're talking a half a swing weight maybe all right so there it is a swing that's probably the most precise way of getting yourself a swing weight is the split grip and they're easy to come off. Alrighty, so we got to put us to some clubs together. Let's go to the bench. Okay, so what we were talking about before were some uh, assembly characteristics or assembly tricks in order to measure to make sure you got it all right. Now that we made sure we've got it all right, now we got to put it truly together in the assembly. Now there's two kinds of glues that one can use. One is called the 420, that's the DP 420, and then there's the 810. The 810 is a, is a uh, fast drying, and the 420 from 3M is specifically geared towards making golf clubs. And since I have time, we're going to use this. So you get out just enough because it's not inexpensive glue to be sure. All right, got that back there. Another, another trick here is popsicle sticks, right? I did buy popsicle sticks. And away we go. All right, I normally want to just stir for about a minute. The idea is to get it thoroughly mixed, remove any bubbles that might be in there. I get about three quarters of the way, put a little bit of the quick center in there, and voila, there we go. Now, the next step is, and it should have been done prior to, as you see, I've got everything laid out. I got all my weights, my ferrules, my heads, my shafts are prepped, and I even have tape. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put just a little bit of glue on there. We're going to slide the ferrule on, put a little bit of glue on that. There you go, it's all the way down. Now if you ever think that you've got any glue on yourself you want to go wash your hands because it's just going to find its way under the club all right all right we think we got her down just enough glue at the end spin it around now i will say that there are other techniques out there that also talk about that will put glue in the hosel and then you put it around there in this case, what we're doing is we're checking to make sure that there's glue all up and down that hosel. We want to make sure that the shaft is aligned properly, i.e. logo down. I'm glad I did that. Logo down, which means for me, logo up on the back side. Seat it. And then wipe off the excess. And we want to wipe off the excess because it just makes for cleaning easier down the road or finishing down the road. All right. So there we go. We have the logo down on the back side. Take a piece of tape. That way it doesn't, nothing creeps or comes out. That's particularly useful when you're using weights because you, you create a hydraulic, you can create a hydraulic lock where there's air bubbles trapped in there and all it wants to do is escape the entire time. So if you can get it to seat and stay in there pretty good, you've, you've won the match. Spin it in there. Make 
sure we're covered. A little bit on this one. They'll go up or down as the case may be. And some tape. And we're on to the next one. <laughs> so there's that just assembly, everything's dry and ready to go. And we basically just have to cut them and grip them and check some loss and lies. And I think I'm gonna just kind of stop it at this for a couple of tips, tips and tricks. That way, you know, we, we don't overload in any one spot where you can kind of digest these a little bit by little bit. So initially, making sure all your stuff is in a line and know that if you're going to, and what you, what adjustments you're going to have to make prior to doing any cutting or anything. That's number one. Number two is to check for your swing weight, use the split grip. Number three, align all your stuff up so that it's right there in front of you because sometimes glue has a, a cure time or a gel time that is very, very fast. Now, the one I use, I pretty much run up right against the end of it. You might be able to go another minute or two, but I, I don't like doing that. In the other one, you, I could only get maybe three or four before I have to make another new batch. Not good or bad in between, just got to know what to do when you're doing it. And when you're more aligned, everything goes faster and you get more done. And that's the other one. The other one is using tape so that the ferrules don't creep. You're going to be masking tape. That's pretty much the easiest stuff. And then when you're ready to go, it's dress the ferrules, cut them the length, loft and lies, Bob's your uncle. There you go. So if you're trying to do this and you get a little bit out of your depth, give us a uh, email or a phone call. You can uh, email us at mcgolfshop at roadrunner.com or clubmaker at mcgolf.net. And that way we can help you take care of it and you can get back onto the course. If you have any questions, put them in the show notes and that way you're doing it. And you're probably seeing something in the way of, a, hey, a subscribe up here and hey, there's a there's a video here <laughs> that's part of our library and you might learn a little bit more. Click on it and see what you think. And as always, let's see your scores. Good luck.